Okay, welcome to lecture 7.2. So now we have some new formulas. These are for addition and subtraction formulas. So we have some formulas for sine, formulas for cosine, and then formulas for tangent. Once again, the three main ones that we look at. There are definitely a lot going on, so make sure to carefully focus on the different aspects of them. And then we'll figure out what they're for in a sec. So there are two formulas for sine. One is if you create an addition on the inside of sine, the other one is if you create a subtraction. Now notice the addition and the subtraction follow over into the formulas. We got addition, and then we've got subtraction. And in the first parts for each of them, there's a sine, then a cosine, and then a cosine and sine. For the top and the bottom values. Now the formulas for cosine. Once again notice there is an addition and subtraction version. However, for cosine, the addition switches to a subtraction when you write out the formula, and the subtraction switches to addition when you write out the formula. And different from sine, for cosine, the beginning of the both formulas are both cosines, and the last formulas are both sines. And then formulas for tangent. There is, again, the addition and the subtraction for both of them. Now the formulas for tangent are a lot more complicated. So for tangent, what do we have going on? So the addition, we get an addition in the top and then a subtraction in the bottom. And then for subtraction, we have subtraction on the top and addition on the bottom. Now one thing you'll also note, on the inside, there is an addition or a subtraction of two different values for sine, cosine, and tangent. So for sine, if we have an s and a t, notice they split respectively in different ways. So take the time to look at these, memorize them, and we'll go ahead and start working on them now. You might ask, well, why do we need to learn these things? Why, you know, they're so complicated. What, what is their use? Well, here is the use. So, you know, usually when we're trying to solve for something, let's say if I asked for sine of 30 degrees, you would know that that is going to be sine of pi over 6, which we easily know from the unit circle, you know, because we have those different values memorized. Sine over pi over 6 is a half. However, if you look at example 1, we're told to find the exact value. Once again, exact value, you're not going to plug that into a calculator. So how can we find an exact value? Well, the plan would be to use these formulas up here by creating an addition or subtraction inside of the value here into values that we know. And once again, remember values we know are 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and so on. So the values we know from the unit circle, that's our goal. So let's see, sine of 15, can I rewrite that into an addition or subtraction of two values we know? And the answer is yes, we can rewrite this as sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Once again, why did I choose 45 and 30? One, because when I subtract them, I get the 15 back, so I haven't changed anything. And also, I know what sine of 45 is and sine of 30 is. Okay, so which formula did I just break this up into? Let me go ahead and erase the top here. So the formula I have split this up to is a subtraction of sines. Okay, that will be this formula right here. So we need to identify what the s value is going to be and then what the t value is going to be. Well, the s value in our case is 45 and the t value is 30. So rewriting this correctly, we're going to do sine of s, cosine s, and then cosine t, sine of t. Now they do need to be in the right order. Why? Because we are dealing with subtraction. So this is going to equal sine of 45 degrees, copying this here, times cosine of 30 degrees, copying right there, and then minus cosine of s and sine of t. Okay, so we went ahead, we copied it down. Now we can go ahead and evaluate this because we know all of these answers. What is sine of 45 degrees? Well, 45 degrees is pi over 2 and sine of pi over 2 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 degrees, 30 degrees is at pi over 6, so that'll be root 3 over 2, minus cosine of 45 degrees, 
That is once again at pi over 2, so that will be root 2 over 2. And then sine of 30 degrees is at pi over 6, and sine is a half at pi over 6. Okay, so simplifying this, we get root 6 over 2 minus root, oh sorry, root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4. And simplifying that further, we'll end up with our answer of root 6 minus root 2 over 4. And we cannot combine those radicals, so that's our answer. So as you can see, we were able to evaluate this without a calculator by just breaking it up into net values that we knew. So now we have cosine of pi over 12. Can we break pi over 12 into a value that we know? Because we don't know what pi over 12 is. Well, let's see. This is 1 pi over 12, right? Pi over 12 is the same thing as, let's see, 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. And 4 pi over 12 and 3 pi over 12, those simplify into pi over 3 minus pi over 4. And we know those values. We know those on the unit circle. So let's go ahead and do that. So cosine of pi over 12 is going to simplify into, or we're going to simplify it into, cosine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. And once again, why are we doing this? So we can use one of the formulas above. So we're using a subtraction, which means we are going to use this formula right there. Let me go ahead and rewrite that formula down for us. Okay, so the formula we're using on the side here. Cosine of s minus t is equal to cosine of s, cosine of t, plus sine s, sine t. Once again, things to memorize. All right, what are s and what are t? Well, pi over 3 is the first value, so pi over 3 will be our s value. And then pi over 4 is the last one, which will be our t value. Once again, you need to keep them in order because it is subtraction. So we could not switch the pi over 3 and pi over 4. Now let's go ahead and plug that in. So that'll be cosine of pi over 3 times cosine of pi over 4 plus sine of pi over 3 times sine of pi over 4. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and erase the formula. And now these are all values that we know, so we can go ahead and evaluate them. Feel free to pause the video and try to evaluate by yourself and then check in with me. But other than that, let's see, so cosine of pi over 3, what is that going to be? Well, pi over 3, the values there are half and root 3 over 2, so cosine will be a half. Then cosine at pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2. Plus sine of pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2. And then sine of pi over 4 will be root 2 over 2. Okay, so simplifying, adding together, root 2 over 4 plus root 6 over 4 which will equal 2 plus root 6, sorry, root 2 plus root 6 over 4, and that is it. Once again, we are not using any ca um, a calculator to write the answers for this. So now let's look at tangent of 75 degrees. We don't know that value on the unit circle, so we have to figure out how we can write that with an addition or a subtraction into values that we do know from the unit circle. So 40, or 75, that can be written as tangent of 45, which we know from the unit circle, plus 30, which we also know from the unit circle. So now I'm going to go ahead and write down the formula for tangent. So what is the formula for tangent? Tangent of s plus t, because we're dealing with a plus here, is definitely a complicated one. Tangent of s plus tangent of t all over 1 minus tangent of s, tangent of t. Now for the next exam, some of the formulas will be provided, and I'll send out an announcement for that by the time exam 2 comes around. Okay, so identifying what s and t are. 45 is the s value, and 30 is the t value. Okay, let's go ahead and plug these in. So that'll be equal to tangent of 45, plus tangent of 30, 
divided by 1 minus tangent of 45 times tangent of 30. Okay. Well, we know all these values. So let's go ahead and plug them in. Tangent of 45, that is going to be... Okay, so it's definitely going to be a lot more complicated because tangent is a bunch of fractions. So that'll be root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2 plus tangent of 30. So at 30, let's see, cosine is root 3 over 2 and sine is a half, so that'll be a half over root 3 over 2 divided by 1 minus, and co tangent of 45 we already found right there, root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2 and tangent of 30 we had on top again. There we go. So now let's simplify. That goes to 1, and that also goes to 1. And then in these, the 2's will cancel out. So what are we left with? We have 1 plus 1 over root 3 divided by 1 minus, that's going to be 1 times 1 over root 3. All right, so we need to get rid of those mini complex fractions. So the root 3's are in the denominator, so let's go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by those root 3's. So distributing those in, let's see, they'll both cancel with those, but they'll be left with the 1. So have root 3 plus 1, all over root 3 minus 1. Okay, so if we had to rationalize it, which most of the time we do. How would we rationalize this? Well, we'd need to multiply the bottom by the conjugate. So let's go ahead and do that. Root 3 plus 1. And then we would get root 3 plus 1 squared on the top, because there's two of the same. And in the bottom we would get, because these two are the difference of squares, you just end up squaring the first value and then subtracting the second value squared. Once again, that is a Math 135 skill. Then we'll have root 3 plus 1 squared all over 3 minus 1, which equals root 3 plus 1 squared all over 2. Whew, a lot of steps. But once again, these are skills from like Math 103 or 135. But as usual, if you want a refresher on anything, just let me know. And that is our answer. Okay, example D, cosine of 105 degrees. Once again, the plan is, even because we don't know what 105 is on the unit circle, we've got to break that up into things we do know. 105, um, let's see, values I know. I know 60, 45, 90. 60 and 90 would give me something bigger than 105. Ooh, but 60 and 45 would give me 105. Let's go ahead and do that. It'll be cosine of 60 plus 45. All right, and then the formula for that, let's see. That'll be, so we're looking at a plus, cosine s plus t equals cosine s cosine t minus sine of s sine t. Sorry, squished that in a bit there. Okay, identifying the s and the t values. s is 60, and t is 45. Okay, plugging those in. That'll be, let's see, so cosine of 60, cosine of 45, minus sine of 60, cosine of 45. The roosters are really crowing right now. Oh, that should be sine of 45. Okay, so once we have those values in, we do know how to find all of those without a calculator because we know the unit circle. So cosine at 60 degrees is going to be a half. And then cosine at 45 degrees is going to be root 2 over 2. Minus sine at 60 degrees is going to be root 3 over 2. Cosine will be root 2 over 2. And we have root 2 over 2 minus root 6 over 4. Four. Ooh, sorry, that should be a 4 there. And we'll get root 2 minus root 6 over 4, which we actually did get earlier. It's kind of interesting. 
Alrighty, so that was it for example D. Now let's go ahead and work on example two. Evaluate the expression. So what do we have going on here? Well, I see a lot of different trig functions first off. I see sine, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. And there's that subtraction going on inside of sine. So I might be tempted to start breaking this up into that um, formula we have for sine with the addition on the inside. But before I do that, can we simplify anything inside of our parentheses? Can I simplify cosine inverse of root two or root three over two? So let's do this on the side. Cosine inverse of root three over two. I think we can simplify that because I know root three over two is on the unit circle. So set that equal to y. And then switching over to cosine, we'll get cosine of y equals root three over two. So when does cosine of y equal root three over two? That is going to be at five or six. Okay, so this simplifies to pi over six. Okay, good thing we did that. So now let's see, can we simplify tangent inverse? Well, let's set that equal to x, and then that means tangent of x equals one. So when does tangent equal one? That is at pi over four. Ooh, so that simplifies to pi over four. Awesome, always simplify if you can. It makes life so much easier. So this will just be sine of pi over six plus pi over four. And now we can go ahead and break this into the formula for sine. So that'll be sine of pi over six cosine of pi over four plus cosine pi over six sine pi over four. Okay, and simplifying this, that will be, so sine of pi over six is a half, cosine of pi over four is root two over two, plus cosine of pi over six is root three over two, and sine of pi over four is root two over two. Once again, these are all values from the unit circle. Multiplying it out, I get root two over four plus root six over four, which gives me root two plus root six over four. And we are done. Definitely easier to simplify the values if you know them. All right, example three. Write the expression in terms of x and y only. Well, how can we do that? Where are x and y? x and y are currently inside of a sine inverse and inside of a cosine inverse. But we know how to get things outside from a sine inverse and a cosine inverse, don't we? So let's go ahead, simplify this like we were doing just above here. Let's say, let sine inverse of x equal theta, which then means that sine of theta equals x. Okay, good, so we have x by itself now, that's part of the plan, awesome. Let's do the same thing for cosine. So let's let cosine inverse of y equal alpha. So then solving for that, we get cosine of alpha equals y. And now we have y by itself. Okay, things are going pretty well so far. So let's go ahead and plug those values in. So that's gonna be sine of, so sine inverse of x we know equals theta, and cosine inverse of y equals alpha. So then that equals sine of theta minus, oh sorry, sine of theta cosine alpha minus sine of alpha cosine of theta. All right, so do we know, at the moment these are not written in x and y, just note that, but we do know a few things. First off, we know that sine of theta equals x, so I can plug that in there. And then I know that cosine, let me go ahead, sorry, re, recolor that. And I know that cosine of alpha equals y. So I have the first terms down. That would equal x times y. But I need to figure out how to find sine of alpha and cosine of theta. I don't have those yet. So let's refer back to the triangle. So if I was looking at a triangle for the sine of theta equals x. I know that it equals x over one. So if this was the angle theta, and I know sine is opposite over hypotenuse, that means the value here is x and the hypotenuse is one. 
Now, I want to find cosine of theta. So using this triangle, I want to find the value here because I know that's what cosine is going to be. So since this is a right triangle, let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for that value there. So for the Pythagorean theorem, let me just go ahead and scratch this work off here as scratch work. With the Pythagorean theorem, we know that x squared plus the value here, let's go ahead and call this one, mm, I don't know, why not c, really random variable, c squared equals 1 squared. So then c squared is going to equal 1 minus x squared, so c equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. We'll go ahead and take the positive, c equals square root of 1 minus x squared. So now we have the full triangle filled out, which means we can find cosine of theta. So cosine of theta is going to equal, we know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and the adjacent value is this one right here. So adjacent over hypotenuse is going to be root 1 minus x squared over 1, which would just be root 1 minus x squared. Okay, sweet, so we found that for the cosine of theta. So that would be minus whatever our sine value is, and then cosine of theta we found out was square root of 1 minus x squared. So now, let's do the exact same thing to find sine of alpha. We know that cosine of alpha is going to equal y, and cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and draw a triangle, label those sides accordingly. Actually, let me erase that triangle, put it up a little higher so I can show all of my work. So we're going to have adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent value is going to be y, and the hypotenuse value is going to be 1. So we need the value here to find my sine of alpha. Well, let's go ahead and call this value n. Why not? So solving for that, we have that n squared plus y squared equals 1 squared, which then means n squared equals 1 minus y squared. So square rooting both sides, we'll get n equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus y squared. Once again, we'll take the positive. So this side here, the opposite one, is 1 minus y squared. So the last thing we need to solve for, for this problem, is we need sine of alpha. It's the last thing. And then we have everything written in y and x. So sine of alpha is going to equal, we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which will equal root 1 minus y squared over 1. And that's it. We have found sine of alpha. Whew, a lot of work. So sine of alpha equals square root of 1 minus y squared. And we are done. We have written this in terms of x and y only. Definitely a pretty in-depth problem, I would say. Okay, so now let's take a look at example 4. So we're told to evaluate cosine of theta plus null, where cosine of theta equals 3 over 5 in quadrant 4, and tangent of null equals negative root 3, where null is in quadrant 2. Okay, so this is interesting. So you know what? Because I was given so many things, I'm going to go ahead and draw some diagrams so I can get this information straight. So I have my quadrant here, and I'm going to go ahead and evaluate or draw out this information right here. So I know we're in quadrant 4, but I need to figure out how to draw my triangle. So we know that cosine is, let's see, 4 over 5, and cosine, if you recall, let me go ahead and write this out here, cosine of theta is going to equal 3 over 5, which is going to be the opposite value over our hypotenuse, sorry, the adjacent value over hypotenuse. So if I draw a triangle, I want my adjacent value on the side, and there we go, we'll have it, well, that's somewhat a triangle, and here's our right angle. So the value along here is going to be 3, and then the value, our hypotenuse, is 5. And this right here is theta. 
So then what's the value or the length of this leg here? Well, if you know in general four right triangles, the three, four, five, what you would call it, three, four, five is one of the known sides of a right triangle. So this is going to be a four. The question is, should it be a positive or negative? Since it is the value down this direction, it is going to be a negative. Okay, so we have a negative four. Let's go ahead and draw the other one that we have. So what do we have here? So we have tangent of null is going to be negative root three in quadrant two. So in quadrant two, now what is tangent of theta? Or sorry, tangent of null. We know tangent is supposed to be equal to opposite over adjacent. The question is, if we put it opposite over adjacent, which one gets the negative? The root three or the one? Let's go ahead first, draw the triangle, and then figure that out. So here we have our triangle with our angle of the null. And then we know opposite should be root three. And the adjacent one should be one. Well, since we're over in this quadrant, the x values are negative. So we should actually have the negative with the one and the positive with the three. So now all I have to do is find the hypotenuse. So finding the hypotenuse, let's go ahead and do that. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So root three squared plus negative one squared should equal my hypotenuse squared. That'll be three plus one equals h squared. So we'll get plus or minus the square root of four equals h. And then h equals plus or minus two. So we're gonna go ahead and take the two for h, positive two. So now we have all of the values of our angles here. And what are we trying to figure out? We want to figure out cosine of theta plus null. So cosine of theta plus null. Well, for cosine of theta, we know with that addition, it's going to split into the formula of cosine theta, cosine of the null, minus sine of theta, sine of the null, and then Let's see, what is cosine of theta? So we're gonna be looking at cosine of theta. We already actually know that value. We're given that. So that is three over five. We were given that earlier. So we have three over five. And then cosine of the null. We don't know that one yet. So we're gonna take a look at the values from here. So if you recall, cosine is supposed to be equal to, so katoa, so adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative one over two. Minus, and then sine of theta. So we don't have that one yet, so we gotta go ahead and look at the other triangle. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the opposite value will be negative four over hypotenuse, so negative four over five. And then sine of the null. We don't know that one either. So in order to find that, we'll go ahead and look at the other triangle. And we want to have opposite over hypotenuse, so that'll be the root three over two. So root three over two. Let's plug that in, root three over two. And then let's simplify. So I'll get negative three over 10 minus negative four root three over 10, simplifying that. That'll be negative three plus four root three over 10. So that was definitely an interesting problem too. Okay, the rest are practice problems. Please email me if you have any questions. And once again, the answers for the practice problems will be up by the end of the week.